So there's a lot of people who uh, sleep on seated pressing, the like authentic strength culture approved barbell lift is the standing strict press, which is great. It's a great movement, it's a staple, but you can get a lot out of being seated, being more stable, even being back at a little incline. I've played around with range of motion with incline to allow for more uh, overload, and it is a welcome change, trust me, when standing strict presses get stale. When you get tired of trying to squeeze your ass to build stability, uh, and getting lower back pumps as you lean back, you know, under all this weight, trying to get the last drop out of your shoulders. Sometimes it's nice to just be able to brace into something, stay rigid. I mean, if that's all you do, it's going to hinder you on the other end. If you ever try to go into an actual contest where you have to press overhead, standing on your own two feet. So it's a good tool to have in your back pocket to be comfortable doing that. But as a developmental exercise, seated presses are fantastic. So do a little pyramid action today. I'm a big fan of pyramids, uh, working up, working down. Part of it's because you get a variety of rep ranges, which is great for just broad developmental purposes. There's only a few parts of your training where you really need to hyper-focus on one particular range. But most of your training, I think, should have a, a variety of thresholds. It's a good way to get a lot out of the compound lifts. Also, uh, load variation makes the sets less mind-numbing. You get excited about more of them you like actually want to hang around and do the next set. I mean, five sets of 10, there's a reason they call it boring, but big. It's like, it, it is boring, it's mind numbing. And you can get away with it for a couple of weeks or cycles maybe, but there's a point where you're just like, fuck, I don't want to do this anymore. So load variation is a huge, huge workaround of that. It just adds a lot, a lot to your training. And I like doing heavy stuff, a little fatigued. It's a good habit to get into. Same way you train to, be strong without a belt, you know? You train to be strong without perfect scenarios. You want to expose yourself to hard efforts and heavy loads when you are a little fatigued. There's nothing wrong with that. That's what training is for. Remember, we are training. We're tempering ourselves to imperfect circumstances. We're not testing. That's what we're doing here. Um, eventually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to move away from this, this regular pyramid and I'm going to do reverse pyramids, which have historically been like my go-to strength movement. It's just such a good, easy template. It's like a top set, a couple sets of a, of a medium re uh, rep range, and then like a really light high rep back off set. It just checks so many boxes. Can't press anything without my, without my little baby blanket here. Pretty good, not terrible, not great. Going up. Hey, 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 no, 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 that is not what that is there for. Uh, this little guy, by the way, cost me $1,100 today because my Cocker Spaniel tried going for his bone and he decided to take a bite out of his ear. So uh, this guy is in timeout, aren't you? That's what I thought. 225 is a good benchmark weight for me. Um, when I'm really strong, I go off of just how quickly I can just rebound it off my chest and it feels like I could do a million reps. Um, but when I'm not really strong, like right now, I'm still trying to get momentum and get a bunch of good pressing workouts strung together. Uh, it's a good uh, test of, of where my strength is because if it moves okay, I'm on the right track. If it's sticky, if I'm hesitant, if, it, if it's slow, if I'm not confident, that tells me how far behind I am. And usually I don't jump into it anyways. Um, but today, two to three, this is gonna be a real easy sandbag set. I'm not trying to push here. Especially this rack isn't bolted down. I'm in my garage by myself. My wife's at work. This shit falls on me. She's going to come home, find me dead. It's going to be a whole big thing. So uh, I'm going to try not to do that. But I like, not just as part of comebacks, but just training in general. When you're chasing weight, 
More of those attempts should be just getting your toe in the water. Expose yourself to a weight that you haven't quite touched. You don't have to go to failure on every fucking heavy touch you do. You don't have to break your balls on every heavy set that you do. So it's very nice uh, and very productive. And I think it gives you room to grow. And I think psychologically it keeps you in the game if you're, you're overreaching in a very deliberate, calculated way. That basically means leaving reps in the tank. I know for a fact I could do this for double digits, gun to my head, um, but there's a process. It's not about what I do today. I have to be able to sustain this for, for many weeks. All right. Pray for me, Cash. <sighs> All right, no bad, no bad, no bad. So I'm doing the math there. That was pre-workout, slap on the back, working out at like the peak time of day where my free test levels are ramped up to 11. That was 10, maybe 12. Um, especially when I'm coming back. I don't like to grind reps. I know that's where mechanical tension is higher, but that's also typically where my joints start to feel like shit. So there's that. And also I think it teaches bad habits. I like to have as many of my reps as explosive as possible. And that's been a big, big contributor to my push press is that my, my, with a small dip, my nervous system is conditioned with my upper body anyways. God help me if I could do that to my squat or dead, but it just snaps to lockout because I've always practiced speed as a main component. So I do like to have more of my sets quick, high rep set, I'll go quick and then eventual fatigue, I'll slow down, I'll get into the weeds there. Um, I don't know, maybe if I was more durable, if I wasn't so worried about joint inflammation or anything, I'd be able to uh, grind a little more and then strength development would be a little improved. I'm not sure, but this works for me, so this is what I do. I like keeping it quick. I like to dominate the weights before I go trying to pile on a bunch of pig iron. So now I'm just working down. I'll hit this for an AMRAP. I'll probably go down one more time, hit that for an AMRAP. Then I'm on to my accessory exercises. And boom, that's a solid shoulder workout. As of right now, I'm alternating this with another overhead press day. Essentially the same movements. It's not some dramatic split. Uh, I prescribe a lot and you'll see a lot like an overhead day like today and then like a bench day. And that works fine if your shoulders can handle it. I know if I try to go one and one with the same type of progression and the same priority, it eats my shoulders up. So I'm better off doing kind of like a staggered, like undulating periodization. So we'll, I'll have like a heavier day, a day where I'll just reach a higher top set or push it a little harder. And then I'll have the lighter day where if I feel good, I'll go for it, but it's mainly just about blood flow and uh, exposing myself to reps. And that works out pretty well. So that's what I'm doing right now. We'll see if I can uh, keep my shoulders from withering away to nothing. I hear it's a mindset. Looks like I had a lot in the tank, but I was slowing down. My shoulders are cooking right now. There's some, there's some burnage going on. Some of you guys might be looking at me thinking like, Jesus Christ, Bromley sandbags. And you might be right, but these are all tactics I've adapted over the years because I used to go hard as an mf -er when I was younger. But over the years, to keep progress going forward, to keep me feeling good, it's not just about what actually makes you strong, but you have to worry about checking all those other boxes as well, that if you don't check, you'll be out of the game anyways. It doesn't matter if something ramps your strength up really quickly. If you start tearing, <coughs> excuse me, if you start tearing tendons, or psychologically you get burnt out. Whole bunch of reasons that your training might interfere uh, with your progress other than it's not good for making progress. So this works very well for me to address as much problems I have. So I stay with it. And that's one of the reasons why I get so bent out of shape. <coughs> Excuse me. That's one of the reasons I get so bent out of shape. My voice gets a little bit higher pitch when people start saying stupid shit like, you have to go to failure to, to get strong. It's the only way because this isn't just how I trained now or when I was on cycle, getting ready for contests. It's how I trained for most of the 15 years that I was natural and I got really damn strong. So 
you know, coincides with the way Olympic lifters train, coincides with the way most field sports train. I mean, most of the literature, the textbooks, the programming that dictates how athletes train, it doesn't have people going to failure on a regular basis. You're not going to crack a, a, a textbook and see a squat AMRAP. That's, that's generally not seen. That's become more popular in kind of lifting subcultures, become more popular in recent years. But uh, submax training, treating this like skill, uh, getting practice, it works extraordinarily well, which is why that is like the kind of formal approved way of training. But we like to get the best of both worlds, don't we, Cash? So after this, I am going to do some dumbbell presses and some raises, and I'm gonna fuck my shit up with those. What do we got? Quick 20, 25. Whew. Oh, triceps are feeling that. Yeah, buddy. Put a fork in me. All right, so here I got the Nuo Bells uh, SmartFit. It was cool enough to send me a pair of these to try them out. They looked cool. I wasn't quite sure how durable they'd be because I know there's some plastic uh, mechanisms in here. So these are not something you're going to want to dump from the shoulders. But I don't do that shit anyway, so I don't really have to worry about it. These go up to 80 pounds, which is, I mean, it's decently heavy. I mean, if I want a pair of 100s or 120s, I can save up and buy those. Uh, I am getting a pair of power blocks, I think, uh, in the next few weeks. So I'll be able to test those because I think those have attachments to get a bit heavier. These things are so damn cool because of how quickly they move. Like they look and feel like dumbbells. They have these knurled handles, so they're super comfortable. But literally, like you just, you turn the handle and it's like that easy. Like you, you can adjust them from like five to 50 pounds in like 10 seconds. It's super cool. So we'll start with a... So the baby weight for the warm up. There we go. bench i got this bad boy from rep fitness i'm very impressed with the the durability it was like 350 i think but it's a thick pad it grips really well it's heavy duty like it, it, it's a substantial bench i'm not afraid to handle weight on it so i think this was a very good purchase i've seen what other incline benches go for with half the quality and uh, they ain't cheap so you guys know how much of a fan I am of just traditional volume. That's something I do a lot and I recommend a lot. Nothing is really going to beat the really long marathon workouts you can do when you're motivated, when you have the free time, when you can get away with it. But not everybody can. So I figure since I'm in my home gym today, I'll do something more appropriate to most of you who have kids and obligations and you're tired. And eventually you want to have dinner and spend some time with your family. So we're going to accelerate this a little bit. This is going to be more of a of an expedited accessory session. I'm gonna do some density work, so we're gonna get a lot of work in, a very short period of time, and we're gonna smoke, smoke ourselves pretty quick. So we spent most of our quality time on the barbell lift, the main lift, that's the important thing, that's like 80% of what we're doing here, and then we can get a lot out of these couple of movements, we can burn through them really quick. So we're staying light, taking about 30 seconds to rest, three sets of 12. Doesn't sound like a lot, Trust me, this is going to fry you. Really short rest period workouts don't get as much attention as they should, especially on your secondary and tertiary movements. It's a very easy way to get really quality work in very, very quickly. Big metabolic response. I mean, that's failure, but it's with light enough weight, it's more capacity oriented. It's not going to hinder you neurologically quite as much as if you were in a much heavier threshold, but I'm a big fan of this. There is a certain amount of freshness you want for your main lift because that's where you're getting the benefit of load. You want to exploit that. But everything after that, the accessory stuff, don't be afraid to get into the weeds. Don't be afraid to set a timer. Count off 30 seconds in your head. Go, go, go. You'll be amazed how quickly you improve and how much it does for everything else. 
All right, side laterals. I'm doing uh, front raises with barbells on my alternate day. It's a heavier shoulder day. Today I go lighter. I like coming out to the side. So you get a lot of well-rounded de development. It's good for aesthetics, but it's also good for keeping your shoulder healthy. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Just three quick sets, high reps. I'm gonna start off with a weight that I could normally do 25 times. Three sets of 12, 30 seconds in between. Go for the burn, shut it down. Boom, time for dinner. Am I gonna be a hero? I think. I think 35 is a good one. I like using a lot of body English on these. Don't get sloppy, but I do like bringing them together, getting a stretch, bending over, using that momentum to get them initiated and then following through under control. Cool, one to go. One to go, then it's time for dinner. All right, last one. You ready? Ah. So that was a full shoulder workout, quick and dirty. I don't think that took more than a half hour. I took my time on the, the barbell strict presses, move quick on the two accessory movements. High fatigue, a lot of different angles. So not a lot of time, but that was damn effective. And something like this fits with two sessions per week. You could easily repeat this a second time later in the week. If you're doing just another bench day on the other end, tricep shoulders still take a hit on those days. So it's not for nothing. It just means you can go harder on this day. And as far as progression goes, super easy to progress. I gave myself a ton of room to find little ways to improve the stress of my workout. This workout was certainly substantial. I know that I'm gonna be feeling this in the next day or two, but I can chase weight, that's always there. But I like to delay gratification. I like to edge myself a little bit with that. So we'll add sets next time. I'll probably go a fourth round on the dumbbell presses, the lateral raises with that same 30 second split. Uh, I might even do a couple straight sets first and work on filling those out and then doing the 30 second clusters after that. There's a lot of options here, but I'll be progressing this for the next three, four months before I have to switch to anything else. So I look forward to it. So thanks so much for watching guys. Leave your questions in the comments or better yet, take it to Patreon where I upload these videos daily with commentary so you can see how I put all of these principles into action in real time. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, this is Bromley. I'll see you.